we will be getting started in just a couple minutes here. Thought we were ready to go, but we are cleaning a set of balls to make sure that there aren't any funny rolls here in this final match of our DMV Straight Pool Open. We have on the table Roland Garcia versus Mike Davis Jr. Uh, and we have begun. All right, that was the opening break. This is Zach Sykes, tournament director on the mic. I'm not going to be spending the entire time here because, well, I don't know all that much about straight pool like these guys do. Roland Garcia is an 804 Fargo. Mike Davis is a 744. These guys are some of the best of the best. So I hope that you enjoy this final race to 125 here at Streetlights Billiards Academy with the DMV Pool Championships. Hey everybody, Zach Sykes on the mic here. Hope you have been enjoying all the stuff. Roland DMV. Bobby, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. Roland is hanging out with us in the DMV Pool Championships. So they did not clean the set of balls that they had. They went ahead and switched to a different set. Uh, we are playing with the Aramith tournament balls. I am a big fan of them. Not the ones with the funky colors, but the standard colors, as you can see. Not that colors matter in a straight pool. Those of you watching who are not familiar with 14.1 straight pool, the object of the game is to make as many balls as possible. Uh, it is a call shot game, so you have to uh, be deliberate with your shots. You have to make sure that you call the ones you intend to make, or else they don't count. Roland's Fargo. Let me just double check and make sure that I give you the right num right answer there. He's up there. I think he's number one in the Predator Point series right now. Roland Garcia is currently at a cool even 800. He has an 800 Fargo. Well, Mike has got a 744 himself here. Let me see if I can get that listed for you. If you are out there watching, say hi. Let me know you're there. I will do my best to give you guys some decent commentary as we work our way through these racks and answer whatever questions you may have about the game or anything else we're working with.
And boom, there you go. Now you can see there, Fargo's uh, listed up there at the top. Roland is going to be in the blue. Mike is in the red. Uh, I apologize. They decided to put a scorecard in front of the one in the back. That 69 number was uh, Brett Stottlemyre's number that he got to in his match versus Mike Davis in the semifinals which is a reverse of what the two of them did in the semifinals of our straight pool championship back in April, where Brett beat Mike out of the tournament in the semifinal round. We had a strong field today. Including uh, Steve Fleming, our DMV 2022 straight pool champion from April, defeating Brett in the finals. Uh, but this time, both of them are out in the semifinal round, uh, as we have Mike claiming what is his favorite game. Ooh. He just didn't want to deal with that breakout. That's what it was. And then, of course, Roland Garcia, who came into town just the other day to do an exhibition here at Streetlights Billiards Academy. We had a grand old time last night. A bunch of players got the chance to play him in exhibition, real exhibition matches, uh, and then some challenge matches as well. He's getting ready for the U.S. Open, going up, I think, tonight after this match. Is that 69 to 4? No, Alex. The 69 is, yep, the, the 69 is a, is a different scorecard completely. This is the first rack. And Mike is explaining the rules to Roland. This is a fun situation. Whenever there's a ball left in the rack, then it goes up into the spot if that last ball is there. But as is, you know, all he has to do is make the nine ball, and then all the other balls are going to be racked. Yeah, Roland says this is his first time playing straight pool. Give me one second. And we're back. I had to help him with that scorecard a little bit. Shows the difference from being a pro and an amateur. Yeah, these are both both pros out here. Mike has finished very high up at uh, several international level competitions. He's been on two Moscone Cups himself. Roland would probably be picked for the Moscone Cup if there was a Filipino team. That would be pretty neat. But yeah, just being able to walk in and just pick up the game. And I think Roland's high run today is definitely in the 60s and several in the 40s. Our resident straight pool guru, Bobby Chamberlain, uh, has said numerous times that if you can run 40 balls, you can win world championships. I 
wonder if we're going to see 40 here. They have lots of options for bridges here at the Academy. The bridge heads. We can try to give every option for the players so no one can ever be like, ah, oh, man, if I had this or if I had that. Well, we have it. Very nice. So when you're looking at a straight pool table, there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. One of them is to look at your balls in groups of three, which is a great strategy for eight ball and uh, honestly rotation as well. Just you know, trying to get three balls that are close together, easy position, and then have one that you're going to travel with. The other thing with straight pool, and this is not something that I expect to see from Roland, but Mike will probably be working it, and that is uh, to work in sort of a frame conversation where you get all the balls on the outside, and then you turn and you get all the balls on the inside. But Roland is just freewheeling here. He says he loves this game so far because there's no right shot. He can just switch back and forth and there can't be too much penalty. You know, in a couple weeks in Virginia Beach, we're going to have the American 14.1 Straight Pool Championships, which is always a phenomenal tournament. I don't think either of these players is on the list, but it is a stacked list. You, you never know. Alex, you know, in our Straight Pool Championship uh, in April, one player, Brett, took on a 71 ball run to go up. I think it was 75 to, to 5, and he was still ahead at 105 to 50 in a race to 125, and, and Steve Fleming ended up coming back on him. So you, you never know. Both of these players are fo definitely capable of putting in together a 70 ball run. Thank you, Kirk, for giving us that connection to Fargo. You know, one thing you have to take into account when you're looking at these guys' Fargo ratings is who they play against. Because your Fargo is going to be directly related to the levels of the people that you play against. So Mike has a very solid 744, but he also plays against people in the 600s and the 500s regularly in tournaments. He has to just to get through the field. And when they get two and three games, it can pull down the uh, the Fargo rating because it's a performance rating. It's not a skill rating. Roland, on the other hand, only plays with people like Dennis Orcolo and Jericho Benares and that crew. The lowest guys he plays with are in the 750s. I will admit, you know, I, I don't want to see a blowout. You know, I want to see, I want to see Hill Hill. I'm a tournament director. I like seeing Hill Hill. I want this to go 125 to 124. But of course, that means that one of them got to 124 and missed, uh, which hurts. But Roland has been moving through the competition without much resistance. We'll put it that way. The most balls that anyone else has gotten on him today uh, is 34. Uh, and that was from our resident 10-ball champion, uh, Bethany Sykes, who will be playing at the American 14.1 Straight Pool Championship on the women's side.
not much trouble here in this rack. You've got those two balls to negotiate, but you've got the two, and it's an easy position play. I'll probably use this to get in position now. Gonna have to try and hold this. quite successful. So now comes the breakout shot. Right, so he's going to take the 9 and probably just try and send it straight up table. Eh, he could have given himself a nicer angle if it was directly above. But that's still not going to be too bad to be able to put that ball into the bottom left corner and smack right into the rack. He's been working on these break sh breakout shots all day. Once he saw one or two, he's like, oh, that's cool. Just like that. What a thing. We may have created a monster. We're also sending Roland home with the DVD of Jason Shaw's 714 ball high run. Um, that p a portion of which has been recognized by the BCA as the straight pool world record. I think it's 660 something balls, 669. But it is a 714 ball run with one shirt foul. Doesn't negate the fact that 714 balls went in those holes in order and we've got the entire thing on video and we're handing it to Roland it is one of the best instructional videos you've ever seen on straight pool itself as Jason went back and did commentary over his entire run I think there are still some of those available on the legends of pocket billiards page you can contact Bobby Chamberlain but not too many and to be honest they're gonna be a collector's item when he comes back and runs a thousand balls which is definitely his plan. Roland's got some tough work to do after he pushes those together here. I don't know if he has the angle to draw back off this one, but he might be able to go forward into the rail and into the stack. He did have the angle. I might not have had my angle. Jason Harris, you got your DVD. Very nice. Making this game look easy, Mr. Garcia. Now, Mike is still going to get points. Everyone's going to get points for this uh, DMV Master of the Table event we have at the end of the year. But Roland, this year, is not eligible. Oh, Jason, you got your 714 ball high run on USB? Well, that's pretty slick. Very 2022. But yeah, we've got this Master of the Table event. End of the year, we're going to be taking 20 of our top points ranked players who are uh, current or f former residents of D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. And they're going to be playing five different disciplines over five days, culminating in a nice long race to 21 on New Year's Eve and a party. Whether Mike wins this or gets second, he is firmly in first place in those points. In fact, both he and Brett Stottlemyre, based on the points that they will receive from this event, uh, are automatic qualifiers. A custom USB stick holder, Jason? Your USB of the 714 came with a custom USB stick holder? Is that like a koozie for your USB sticks?
Okay, so neither the 6-ball or the 2-ball are nice here for breakouts. So he really wants to leave that 5. <laughs> it is a koozie. <laughs> it's fantastic. He just needs to come all the way back around, leave himself directly above this 5. That was not far enough. But he's still okay. This is still a good breakout shot. He's just going to have to fo go forward into the rail and back out into the rack, which is not as nice, you know, because that rail is going to eat up some of the impulse. And when you come back into the rack and the rack eats up the rest of the impulse, uh, you have to watch out for being glued in there, just stuck in the middle of everything. Let's see how Roland plays this. Yep. Oh, well done. Well done. Got the shell off the rack. And now he's got some stuff to work with. Almost like a drill. And Roland is on autopilot just a little bit here. He's already on a nice... What is this, a 30-ball run? I think so. It was funny, in his semi-final match, Roland had already run all the way out uh, and was standing there deliberating very seriously on his next shot uh, until his opponent looked at him and said, you don't have to think so hard. You've already won. Hey, Upstate Al! Thank you so much. Got a chance to go up there and hang out with uh, Al and Zach with the Digital Pool and Acustats video teams. And they, they do some amazing work. We can only give you a, a portion of the amazing stuff that they do. But more to come. So Roland's got a touchy one here. Probably going to try to use that 14 to pop up into the 4. Thank you, Walter, for reminding us. Yes, Mike did take second in a world 14.1 championship. Yeah, Jason, I also hope Mike gets back to the table. If only just to see him shoot some more. Nice breakout from Roland. So he's looking at this. He's deciding right now what his breakout ball is going to be. And then he'll probably treat it almost like a pin you have to work around. Looks like he's chosen the two ball. He likes that particular breakout. Drive safe, Al. Be careful going down there. Crazy people in Virginia. This is the finals already. Elvis, good to see you. We have a beautiful shirt. Beautiful, beautiful 14.1 shirt uh, made by In The Box Sports. And we are going to be, we are raffling that off on our DMV Pool Championships page. We are going to be making that drawing tomorrow. To make sure everybody who wants a chance gets a chance to bid on it. But it is one of the nicest shirts that you've ever seen. Oh, good. And now that's a perfect spot to be to just pull that ball right back off the 11. Nice touch. And that's the angle he likes. It's maybe a little bit straighter than I would like, but it's the angle he likes. Yeah, my, my wife Bethany and I went up to Sandcastle Billiards this past weekend. Got to hang out with Upstate Al and Zach and Elvis and Ed Ladawi and the whole Sandcastle crew 
for that awesome Sandcastle Open they put on. Didn't get to hang out for the finals, but looked like it was a barn burner. Mm, that did not break up as much as we wanted. <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah, Jason, Jason Shaw definitely appreciates a much more aggressive breakout angle than what he tried to use there. And for obvious reason, because he didn't have enough of an angle to leave impulse on the cue ball after it struck the object ball he wanted, it, it couldn't break the cue ball away from the rack. I got stuck with that shot. But that was a nice 55-56 uh, ball run. Was that, did he go from 13-1 to... 57 to 13? I think he just did. Somebody go back and check the tape for me. Bummer. There was the opportunity. But it is hard. It is hard to sit for that long and to get up and muster the running that you want to deal with. What a bad roll. Right, Kirk? Happens to everybody. You know, Got to give Mike a lot of credit here. He has won three of the last four DMV Pool Championships events against heavy, heavy fields. Got lots of very good rolls. And we all know rolls on the table always even out. That was a pretty good breakout. Roland's already planning his next. At this point, you can't really choose a breakout ball yet. We do call him Iron Mike for a reason, right, Walter? Mike also has a knack for coming back in these races. He was down 8-1 in our 10 ball final and came back and won it 13 11. He was down in our one pocket championship final to Matt Clatterbuck. Hill 2 4 2 and came back and won it 5 4. So you, you can't ever, ever mark him out. That's right, I should mention that that comeback of from 8-1 was against BJ Usury. All right. So now this rack has broken up. The cluster has broken up enough that you can start to look at what's going to be your breakout ball. The 14 is a nice one. He's looking at that. The 14 could be a good breakout ball. The 5 is not bad either, but to be honest with you, of all of these, I would prefer the 8. Why? Because you can come at that, if you're just close to the rail, kind of where that 2 is up there, you'll be able to come off that 8 straight in the rack with a whole lot of force. Thank you, Bethany. Well, he has not chosen the 8-ball. Based on what we've seen from his break shots so far today, 
I'll put 20 bucks that he chooses the five. Uh-oh. Well, not now. Near the wreck. I wasn't sure. I, was, I didn't say the 14 wasn't the better breakout ball, but he has come from the same side, from the same spot on nearly every break ball I've seen. But the 14 is definitely the better choice in this one. Really, really powerful stuff from Roland Garcia here today. This is a race to 125. It's longer than the races that they played all day because we like to make people work for their supper. I guess Bethany, Bethany would know best what his preferred rack break balls were today. Uh, she had the fortune, misfortune of playing him twice, both in the opening round and then the first round of the single elimination. Uh, we played double elimination today first, down to eight, uh, and those, those eight players were played single elimination from there. Four winners versus the four losers. The four B bracket players, they weren't losers. I don't like calling people losers. So we had a lot of good stuff, a lot of powerful play, and some very close matches. I think our closest of the day was a uh, 100 to 96 win, 196. And that's a good day for one player and not a good day for the other, that's for sure. I think what he's doing here is he is kind of deliberately and carefully breaking these racks, breaking these balls open to try to move them into uh, a spot where he's going to be like, okay, that's the breakout ball. It is a privilege. Walter, it is always a privilege to play these upper echelon players. You know, and that's part of why we, we put together this, this series, the DMV Pool Championship Series. It's partially to give the top players, the top and mid-tier players, a, a chance to compete without handicap, make some good money, not have to spend 14 hours at a pool hall, play two matches, and end up out of the money. No, we, we like to get our amateurs, get our academy members in the the ring, in on the court, on the field, whatever you want to call it, with the, with the pool table, uh, with these top guys, and so we, we seed out whenever we do a round robin, we seed out the top players, Mike and BJ and Sean Wilkie and Brandon Schuff, who all played in our eight ball championship last weekend. They played in different groups in the round robin, which they were not mad about, and it allowed every player to get in it is definitely a discounted lesson and the fact that i let him play four matches so you know you get one lesson one lesson from steve fleming and then three other matches to try to apply it mm, decision time That uh, was a good ball. Wow, look at that roll. He has such good cue control. Whew. So what do we think here, folks? 12 ball? Yeah, I think 12 ball. Or the stripe, whatever stripe that is. Wow.
this might be right, Walter. This may bring his Fargo rating to 801. Oh, but he does not like that angle. That's a tough one. You know, Fargo rating is a fun thing. Some players don't like it uh, because they may say that it ruins their action or that, um, you know, it's not always accurate. There's even some that say that it improperly can handicap things. But you got to remember, Fargo ratings are a performance rating. This is based on the matches you've played that have gone into the system. Did he make that? Oh, the one ball got in the way. Whew. You know, it's just the matches that go into the system, and it's not a skill rating. It's a performance rating. Um, but they don't have the mathematical capacity yet to handle adding straight pool races. So if this, if this were to go into Fargo, it would just go in as a 1-0 win, you know, which isn't going to change anything. Bonus ball. He did definitely did not try to pocket the strike ball, but you get points for it anyway. Nice little cut down the rail. Mike's looking to find his rhythm. That was interesting. Looks like it rolled back onto the spot there. Nice. Nice touch. See if Mike can mount a nice run here. He is. He is super casual. You know, one thing I've heard echoed from some of the top street pool players that we talk to, guys like Mike, guys like uh, Earl Strickland when he was here, uh, Jason Shaw, obviously, world record holder, is that you've got to be on rhythm. You know, Bobby Chamberlain was, was talking the other day. He said, you've got to be, you got to have a rhythm to your game when it comes to straight pool. Not just because otherwise it's going to take too long, but because when you're in the rhythm, a lot of times it can pull you into the shot. And if you take too long, you can overthink things. Mike is playing our frame concept. He's taking care of all the balls closer to the rail first, and then he'll worry about those three clustered in the center. All right, that was nice. Now, a lot of people would play the six here, but Mike wants to make sure that he has a good angle for that nine ball. Now he's starting to think about the middle three. Well, maybe we can take one of those now. Maybe it'll help. This isn't the angle he quite wanted for the nine to come back down the table. Going to look at that angle. Use one of these to get there. Oh, well, that was pretty sporty. It's always amazing to me watching Mike shoot because he's got such a big backswing and then he can control that cue ball so nicely. Looks like Mike is going to opt for this two ball for that breakout. Another very nicely positioned ball. An 
the comeback has begun. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a very nice angle to just clip off the top of that rack. You know, if you can hit one of the corner balls on the rack, that's or the top of the rack, it's much nicer than just slamming into the side of it. You're right, Andrew. Hit Mike's bridge is long. It's a it's more of a nine ball bridge. You know, you, you expect a straight straight pool or eight ball bridge to be a little bit shorter. And yeah, Mike does. He does have a tremor in his back arm. You may notice that. He's been dealing with that for a long time. And still wins quite a bit with it. So, you know, it's not much of a hurdle. It's just more of an annoyance at this point. Interestingly enough, he tells me that when he shoots left-handed, he doesn't tremor. So sometimes he just prefers to do that. But that cue ball control isn't there. Years and years of muscle memory in that wrist. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Stevie Moore had a, had a terrible shudder in his arm. I know a few players who deal with that. But uh, it's just one of those things. Clearly is a non-issue as he runs out the whole table. Mm-hmm. That's right. Good examples. Good examples. Mike is preparing his approach at this cluster to try to get it open. Yes, that was the one. And it opened up nicely. Mm. The 9 and 15 are a little closer together than he'd like. See what he decides to do with this. Thanks, Richard. You know, this stream is for you guys. Oh, a tough miss there. Just clipped it. Hmm. You know, w we put on this stream so you all can enjoy Great Pool. Oh, Roland. I could hear him from here. I'm in a whole other room. I heard him go, oh, after that one. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah, so we, we try to put these on so you can see players that you don't normally see play each other battle it out. You know, we've had finals of Mike Davis versus Rafael Reyes, Mike Davis versus Brett Stottlemyre. Steve Fleming, BJ Usury, Nathan Childress has made the trip a few times. Powerful young player from Richmond. And then, of course, the local powerhouses, Brandon Schuff and Sean Wilkie. So we look forward to having these players back and, and seeing more and more of them come and compete. You know, this year our master of the table points and that event are only for Virginia, D.C. and Maryland residents. Uh, but those points next year, next year 2023, which we're building the calendar for already, uh, it's going to be the East Coast Championships and the East Coast master of the table. So that's going to be super exciting. Everybody can get points. Everybody can come and make the big money.
Jason, is that a, a countdown of how many balls he needs? <laughs> 93, 92, 91 now. You know, that might be a more fun way to score this. Have him count down instead of count up. Nice position there from Mike. If he underran it, he had the nine. If he overran it, he's got the six. <laughs> Kirk. <laughs> You know what, Kirk? You can have the eight from me also. In seven ball. And beautiful. Uh-huh. Definitely. Definitely 13 for that breakout. He's, he picked that early. You know, it's funny. Mike is wiping the table there. Quick shout out to our venue host, Streetlights Billiards Academy. If you haven't heard of the Academy, it is a private pool hall uh, where we have members who pay a, a monthly fee to come in. They have 24 hour a day access, code access. We, there is a double lock system, so most of our players leave their stuff at the Academy. Some of them even leave their sticks out. Uh, it is a very safe environment. We have, well, we will have nine nine-foot diamonds, uh, and then one nine-foot gold crown we use for straight pool. That is for straight pool high runs, not for straight pool tournaments. And the cool thing is we're on the third floor of an office building. So there's nobody randomly walking in. They can't get hit in the face with some headlights from a car. And all of our members clean the tables after they use them. So, you know, it's funny. Mike will wipe to get a s fleck off of the cloth, but that's only because it's the only one there. Walter, we are looking at we are looking at franchising this business model. Dion Chapman is the the owner, the visionary behind it. Um, but it, it is his vision to put one of these all set up. You know. Tables up all the time, streaming set up all the time, so anybody who wants to have a, a tournament, a regional tournament, can have it there. You know, we're in Alexandria, Virginia, and that property prices are pretty high here, so we're about as big as this one can get, but if we go to areas where we can put more tables in, I mean, we can have a hall with 25 permanent tables. You want to have a, an expo? You want to have a strong regional field? Well, you can rent the space that's already set up with streaming and everything. How cool would that be? Supported by members. But that's the future. Right now we're in the present. And Mike is running well. Thank you for that vote of confidence, Walter. That was a pretty 14 ball. I was surprised it didn't move more of the cluster around. I think he is too. Speaking of 14 balls, we are raffling off a beautiful 14.1 shirt. It's got a green 14 ball on it. 14.1. And then some nice graphics. White, black, green. Beautiful. Created by Elvis Rodriguez with In The Box Sports. If you want to get in on that raffle, it is a uh, fundraising raffle that we're having. It's on the DMV Pool Championships group page. Elvis designs a lot of the stuff for the pros. We have the Sandcastle Open 64-player field from uh, all over the world, and probably a good quarter of them were wearing his gear. You know it's good. 
Anyway, get in on that raffle. It's over on the DMV Pool Championships group page. Mm, let's see where he can go with this. Oh, that was exciting. Way more exciting than he wanted. But that was a touchy shot. At least he still has the eight ball. Now, this is going to have to be a little recovery. He can put it in the side and just go up. Take the cue ball up table to come back down on that 15, I think it is. Or he can play it up into the corner and run right into the two or the six, something in there. He went for option one. See, now in this situation, Mike's not thinking about a break ball into the next rack. He's just still trying to figure out how to break open this one. He had to stroke that one to get enough power into it. May have been better served to roll forward and use the three, but I don't even know if that three goes past the seven, so that might have been his only option. Also, who am I to say this was a better option for Mike Davis? Now, Roland doesn't like any of these for a breakout. So let's see him move one over a little bit. Roland will be starting up the U.S. Open tomorrow. In Atlantic City. It's got a amazing field. He'll be looking to mix it up. Let me see who he's playing first round. That's a nice breakout. That's a nice angle. Yeah, he'll like that. Roland's got a commanding lead here, but once again, like I said, in our first straight pool championship uh, one player was up 105 to 47 uh, and then did not win that race to 125 anything can happen yeah, straight pool is a great game it will warm you up for rotation it will warm you up for everything I like to think of straight pool in one pocket as the two different ends of the spectrum one pocket is defense, 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 make a shot. Straight pool is offense, 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 offense. Does anybody have the draw out there? Does anybody know who Roland plays first round in the U.S. Open? I can't quite seem to pull it up on my phone right here.
Walter, eight ball rotation is a fun game. You, you're of course speaking of the one where you run your solids or your stripe balls in order into the eight. I think you'd go backwards on the stripes. Is that correct? 15, 14, 13 in order down to the eight. I've played it a few times. Definitely improves your game seeing these angles. Maybe we'll have an eight ball rotation tournament next year. I don't see a lot of trouble on this rack for Roland. He's got those two funky stripes down near the short rail. But he's also got the 8, which will allow him to get on the right side of that. Or one of the other balls over here to get on the right side of that. Thank you, Eddie. Eddie Little made the trip up for our 8-ball championship last weekend. Did pretty good. Jeremy Seaman. That's going to be a good match. Jeremy's a strong player. I'm not actually sure who I root for there, because, you know... In the U.S. Open, I always root for the American. I think he heard me. He did not hear me. He can't hear me. There is no commentator's curse here. I'm in a completely different room. <laughs> here Mike is giving him a little lesson. 125. They didn't know that it's a race to 125. I'm going to go talk to them. Well, folks, that's going to be our match tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, they did not discuss ahead of time that it was a race to 125, and so they've decided that uh, because balls have been moved, that is going to be our final. Congratulations, Roland Garcia, for taking it out. I know the race was supposed to be to 125, Kirk, but they both agreed to a race to 100 before they started, and I'm not going to put the balls back on the table where they were. That's just too complicated. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching our stream tonight. Uh, hope to see you again soon. We'll be back at the uh, Streetlights Billiards Academy One Pocket Challenge, uh, November 6th. Hope you can make it up to that. We've also got a nine ball championship coming up soon. I think Mike and Roland, or Mike's giving Roland a lesson. That's pretty cool. Going to make him even more of a monster. Thank you so much to our sponsors, Anthony Milanesi with AMQs, the best cues on the East Coast, uh, Streetlights Billiards Academy, Dion Chapman, already told you how awesome that place is, 
thank you to Washington Mortgage Group and to Peshawar Custom Cues. We are raffling off a Peshawar Cue also on that DMV Pool Championships group page if you want to get in on that. In the box, Elvis Rodriguez, my man, putting together some awesome shirts. Again, go check out that 14.1. If you win it, you will get your name on the back. Uh, thanks also to Renegade Health Group for putting up some money for this event. And, uh, of course, why? how could I forget Bobby Chamberlain, World Pro Bobby Chamberlain with Legends of Pocket Billiards, bringing straight pool back out into the public eye. Uh, stay tuned for some amazing women's events coming from the Legends of Pocket Billiards coming up uh, in the next couple months. And, of course, Matt Sweet with American Billiards covering. Thank you so much to our fans. Thank you so much to our players. Have a wonderful evening.